Hey everyone, welcome to Trucking Sustainably. We are in California at Act Expo, and we're talking hydrogen, because there's been a lot of development on a hydrogen powertrain on both fuel cell and ice. We're gonna talk with Mitty Farron, Senior Vice President, Powertrain Engineering at Volvo Trucks, to see where we're at with the technology and what it's gonna to take to make it a reality. Let's check in. Mitty, thanks for taking the time. We're talking all things hydrogen here. Can you give me an update on where we stand with hydrogen development for the powertrains? Absolutely. Hydrogen uh, technologies have been under advanced engineering development for a couple of years now. Uh, since then, we have made a significant improvement in uh, different uh, areas of the technology. Uh, we have also uh, improved in partnership, creating uh, two strategic joint ventures. If I start with mentioning our partnership with Westport, mm -hmm. with whom we have uh, formed a joint venture called Cespira a year ago. And then we are making significant progress on the HPDI technology, stands for um, Hydrogen uh, High Pressure Direct Injection Technology. And this technology is also used for uh, LNG, for liquefied natural gas. Okay. So it's a well-proven uh, technology. Uh, we have, for instance, Volvo Group, more than 8,000 trucks in the field, mostly in Europe, already operating with uh, this HPDI technology. And uh, this will be very useful to advance in hydrogen propulsion. If I spoke a little bit now about uh, fuel cell propulsion, right. we have since a couple of years a joint venture together with Daimler. We call it Cellcentric. Right. They are sitting next to us on the booth here. And uh, with uh, Cellcentric, we are developing uh, advanced uh, fuel cell propulsion system for commercial vehicles. And we are making significant progress with a new system that will be a game changer in the industry. Okay, very good. So we got hydrogen ice, so we got a hydrogen combustion engine. We got fuel cell development. What's the need for two hydrogen powertrains? Well, that's a good point. Uh, actually, there is no silver bullet. One uh, size fits all solution for the entire world uh, markets. Obviously, different region of the world, uh, different customer expectation will leave room for different type of uh, technologies. Here, we are being very careful to find the right uh, compromise, the right trade-off to offer a correct value proposition for different type of use case, of course, at the affordability of the customers. So this is why we see room for two different technologies, not necessarily cannibalizing each other, but really complementary to the market for different regions of the world with different access to the grid, different energy supplies, and different affordability levels. Right, and well, you mentioned that global view too. Correct me if I'm wrong here, I feel like uh, the, the European side has already in, been in talks to say this is a no emissions uh, uh, powertrain, that hydrogen ice. Is that correct? And, and what's the view of that from an emission standpoint on the Europe side? True. So in Europe, we have the CO2 uh, new emission standards, which would qualify the hydrogen combustion engine as, as a real uh, zero emission uh, vehicle which is a significant improvement in the public-private uh, dialogue with the authorities. And this uh, leaves, of course, some room to accelerate this technology to the market in, in Europe. Uh, it's not over for North America. We are still in open dialogue. And of course, we believe, particularly the HPDI technology, jointly developed with Westport, can be a game changer for zero emission propulsion, still using combustion technologies. Very good. Uh, you know, hydrogen is one of those things that we, we hear about and then we don't hear about. Then we hear about and we don't hear about. From your view in working with the technology, developing it, engineering it, how have you seen hydrogen evolve over the, over the past couple of years? Well, when we talk about uh, hydrogen, of course, we have to consider it as a long-term play in terms of uh, sustainable solution for the market. Uh, of course, it is not easy everywhere in the world and uh, we see ups and downs and uh, expectations which are not always matched. What we are trying to do is be consistent in our strategy, the three-pronged approach. Uh, enabling to develop both uh, battery electric vehicles, fuel cell electric vehicle, as well as uh, internal combustion engine trucks with low emissions using, for instance, uh, hydrogen. We look at the picture on the long term, and we look also at the infrastructure and the ecosystem. When we talk, for instance, uh, hydrogen, it's important to not only look at the truck, but look at the distribution system, the infrastructure, and the access to the molecule. Right, very good. And that kind of goes with my next question too. What would it take to make hydrogen a reality here in North America? I mean, and the infrastructure is probably a big part of that. True. I mean, we see already some uh, significant uh, progress in uh, different initiatives in different states when it comes to logistics, ports, heavy industry decarbonation. So it's for sure that hydrogen can be a game changer for the decarbonation of uh, carbon emitting industries. When it comes to the commercial vehicle industry, 
it's still uh, slow today, but we see um, good hope that in the future, from customer to the entire ecosystem, there will be an improvement and a margin for opportunities to develop a competitive and affordable solution with such hydrogen ice or hydrogen fuel cell technologies. Very good. Many thanks for taking the time. I appreciate it. Appreciate it. Thank you for watching Trucking Sustainably. We'll see you next time.